The Tesla Powerwall, it's probably the first name you think of when it comes to home storage batteries. And for good reason. It's smart, it's sleek, it's powerful. But there's a catch. It's not perfect. In fact, there's one crucial feature it simply doesn't have. And the crazy part, without it, you could be leaving hundreds on the table every single year. Let me explain. If you're in the market for a premium home storage battery, there are many reasons why you might consider a Tesla Powerwall. It's made by a trusted brand with a strong track record. It has 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. It can be mounted inside or outside the home thanks to advanced thermal regulation. It can charge and discharge at up to 11 kilowatts for the Powerwall 3 subject to DNO approval. And they are expandable, which is good for future proofing. It can also provide automatic backup in power cuts thanks to its gateway. And of course, it has a 10 year unlimited cycle warranty, whereas most batteries have something like a 10,000 cycle warranty. So what's the issue then? Naturally, it comes at quite a high cost at around about 8,000 per unit. But that's not what I'm referring to here. The Tesla Powerwall has a bit of a dark secret. It's a topic owners might avoid when discussing tariffs and general charging strategy because its missing feature is forced discharge. There is no easy way of saying to the Powerwall, reduce state of charge to a defined percentage at a set time or by a set time. Why is this an issue? For some, maybe it isn't. But you might well observe that many of the increasing number of competitors to Tesla's Powerwall do allow grid export functions at times specifically chosen by the user. Give Energy, for example, has a timed export setting. Alpha has a discharge batteries to the grid setting. Solar Edge allows a manual control where users can set the battery discharge. And SIG Energy with their new SIG and store, they also have a manual control setting which allows users to set the desired power and time period. All these competitors allow users to schedule times to discharge to the grid. But Tesla Powerwall simply doesn't have such a setting. But why would you want to? Surely the purpose of a home storage battery is to store the energy for later use, not to export it back from where it came. Part of a successful battery management strategy might be to include a practice known as arbitrage. You see, smart tariffs such as Octopus Go have very cheap off-peak rates such as 8.5 pence and higher export rates at 15 pence. This presents an opportunity to effectively trade energy. The ability to buy in and store cheap electricity, then discharge it back to the grid when it pays a higher rate. The primary purpose of this is to make you extra money, which is important given the premium price of the Tesla Powerwall at around about 8,000. Being more expensive than its competitors, it would be a great way to justify that high cost, reducing the return on investment. So how much can realistically be saved or earned from this practice of arbitrage? From a single Powerwall with 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, let's say we discharge a proportion of 0.8, so 100% down to 20% state of charge, or 80% down to zero. That is 10.8 kilowatt hours exported at 15 pence. Exporting that 10.8 kilowatt hours gives us a grand total of £1.62. From that, we need to subtract 92 pence, as that's what it would cost to get that same energy back at the cheap rate of 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour. That gives us a profit of around about 70 pence. But for fairness, we need to account for round trip efficiencies. So we'll reduce that by another 10% and let's call it 63 pence. Not much on its own, but consider that over a year. That's just over 230 pounds, much more significant. The Powerwall is capable of exporting to the grid, but often, by default, the option is deactivated, meaning exports will simply be from any solar generated within the property rather than from the battery itself. Often, the installer, or yourself as a customer, will need to specifically request export capability. To do this, you need to speak to customer services, specify your approved export limit given to you by your DNO, and then that will unlock an additional option within the Powerwall settings to export, either from solar or everything. But that's not the end of it. It gives your Powerwall the ability to export stored energy, but not to control how much 
and when it happens. The Tesla Powerwall has two main control modes, the first of which is known as self-use, and that relies on stored energy and only imports from the grid when a specified minimum state of charge is reached. The second control mode is known as time-based control, and here's the definition from the Tesla website. Time-based control, also referred to as load shifting, is an energy optimization technique that can help you maximize savings through smart charging and discharging of your Powerwall. With time-based control, Powerwall will charge when energy costs from your supplier are low and power your home when energy costs are high. This helps minimize your bill and reduce the cost of your total energy usage. That sounds like precisely what we need to make the most of this arbitrage scenario I described earlier, but in my experience with different tariffs, the results can be somewhat patchy. Back when I had Octopus Flux, a tariff with three different rates depending on the time of day, it worked relatively well. It did export excess energy back to the grid between the peak times of 4 and 7 p.m. for a handsome payout, leaving just enough to get to the off-peak time frame in the night, when it would import significant quantities at a cheap rate. Though it wasn't perfect, as sometimes it would import too much, only to then export that back in the middle of the day at a slightly lower rate. On Octopus Go, however, it didn't like to export at all, despite the fact I could theoretically export at any time at 15 pence and buy that energy back at 8.5 pence during the night. So what are the ways around this? How do you get to do exactly what you want? The easiest method I've found is to manually input incorrect tariff costs in the utility rate plan section when in time-based control. It will fool the system into thinking you can save more money than is actually the case, and with extreme values, it can be tricked into doing what you want it to. Fair warning, however, any data it tracks relating to costs and savings effectively go out the window. But what's more important to you, getting it to earn the money or having accurate data tracking what you've saved. Another option is a third-party app called Net Zero. This gives users additional information such as battery health, but crucially, it allows power users to set up automations to charge from or discharge to the grid at set times defined by the user, just like competitors. It does have some downsides, however. It costs a whopping $6.99, which wipes away a lot of the financial benefit. There is a 30-day free trial, though, if you wanted to check it out. Being a third-party app, it does require access to all of your usage data, which may be a concern for some. Another option is Home Assistant. This can be used also to set up automations, but it does require the purchase of additional hardware. Raspberry Pis tend to be a popular choice for running Home Assistant. A good source of reference when setting up Home Assistant is a channel called Speak to the Geek, he has a wealth of knowledge on this particular topic. If you yourself have any experience using either Net Zero or Home Assistant to force discharge a Tesla Powerwall, do let everyone know in the comments if they find these methods to be effective or if there are any issues. Another option to consider is perhaps joining an intelligent tariff such as Octopus Intelligent Flux. With this, Octopus or whoever your energy supplier is will take control of the battery to charge and discharge it at appropriate times based on the cost and grid demand. But do you trust them to maximize your profits? Their primary objective is more to balance the grid, not necessarily to fill your pockets, so charging and discharging may not be financially optimized. While there are other options available to power all users, we simply have to ask, if external apps are allowing these kind of automations for grid discharge, why can't Tesla themselves integrate that to their own app? We are talking, of course, about a company valued at just over $1 trillion, with plenty of software expertise among their 125,000 strong workforce. Do they consider this form of control to be too primitive? Or could it be, with the UK tariffs having such a large gap between off-peak import and potential export prices, it just doesn't work so well with their algorithms? Or could it be something else entirely? What do you think? If you have a Tesla Powerwall, does this emission frustrate you? Does it embarrass you knowing many cheaper alternatives on the market have this very basic but useful feature? If you are looking at purchasing a home storage battery, would this knowledge put you off choosing a Tesla Powerwall? If you have found this interesting or useful, please give this a like. 
consider subscribing for more videos around my renewable energy journey. And a big thank you to all my current subscribers and regular viewers. Check out my referral codes in the description if you are considering a battery, solar or heat pump installation, or even a change of energy provider to Octopus. That's all from me today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.